Hello, hello everyone, Taisha Hao, and welcome back to my vow to my liege. Now, it's been a while, I apologize, but now we can finally finish this off properly. Last time we found out who the real dragon god was, and how we've been fooled this entire time. Thankfully, it isn't a guy that I liked, so that's nice at least. But anyway, let's just, let's just head on in. Let's just hide it back on in. So we are on this one. Yes, we're on this one. Yes, I would like to load it up. Yes, we're on this one, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think so. <laughs> Pretty sure this is chapter 9. The, the issue with Xiao Jiang is peacefully resolved. Mr. Gongsun has submitted a formal request to return to his kingdom. I'm taking the opportunity to visit someone else who is also waiting to return to his kingdom. Okay, so yeah, I do. I, I faintly remember this being the last bit for chapter 9, I believe. Adieu. Don't say that you're a sinner. Ugh. What sinner? You saved me. I should thank you for it. So? I know. There is no one around, so I wish to treat you as a friend. Baby. Come on, baby. Don't don't be like that, please. I'm sorry. It's not my fault that you had to suffer. I don't like that, please. Don't be used to it, please. Don't say that. Sooner or later, you will return back to the Kingdom of Yue to be their king again. Prime Minister Wu is still angry over the incident with the head priest. I will find a good time to discuss this with him. Not only is Wu Shishu, I hate his name, angry, but he has also given me the cold shoulder. Even when discussing official matters, he only says the bare minimum. If I bring up the subject of letting Gao Jiang return to Yue, Gao Jiang's head would hang on the city walls in no time flat. But I cannot tell Gao Jiang, Gao Jiang this. I can only keep my thoughts to myself and apologize to him in my heart. I that monster. I did not dare tell you this before because I had hoped that I could re resolve the issue with the Dragon God and his followers without having to involve anyone else. I did not think that you, Xiao Jiang, and Yi Guang would also be affected. I'm hearing a lot of noise. Interesting. The Dragon God had an agreement with my ancestors that we, the kings of Nung, would need to serve him. Five years ago, my father, the former king, wanted to kill the Dragon God, but the Dragon God's followers foiled our plans and my three elder brothers were killed by the Dragon God instead. <laughs> I understand. That'd be pretty cool. I think that'd be kind of cool. But even the people of Nung do not know much about the Dragon God's followers. True. Every little clue helps. 
Thank you for the assistance, Adia. Oh, yes. We are talking with the King of Yue at the moment. What? Is it regarding the Dragon God? What? Even the Prime Minister has rushed over there? What on earth could be the matter? Chen Feng glances at Guo Jiang and hesitates for a moment bef uh, for a minute bef bleh, for a minute before saying something that shocks Guo Jiang and me so much that it renders us speechless. <gasps> no. What? <laughs> I love this. As I step into the hall, I hear a sob. It is the envoy of Chi, Mr. Go Sun Ji. Gong Sun Yi. Oh my goodness. I, I need to get better at my pronunciations. Who has forgotten all decorum. When Gong Sun Yi sees me, he rushes in front of me, kneels down, and bows to me with his head on the ground, crying as he begs me. Dalang! Good sir, you're loud. Oh my goodness, you were loud. Oh, my ears. <laughs> calm down, calm down. Okay, I need to reread that because all I could think was ow. <laughs> uh. Da -da -da -da. Okay, there we go. Mr. Gongsun, please get up. We are shocked by the news of what has what had happened to the king of Shi. Shi Shi. Shi. But we need you to give us the details. Oh? Shalwa! <laughs> Sorry. I've been, I've been watching Word of Honor recently. Again, for like the fifth time now. I've rewatched it. <laughs> and sometimes what they say is so... Funny to repeat. Although the king of Chi Chi was still in his prime, for him to perish at the hands of such a dastardly man? This goes against all ethical norms. The will of heaven has been broken. The citizens of Chi will suffer yet again. <laughs> She lost her big bro. Please do not worry. Although you could not return in time to give your answer to your king, we will soon we will still honor the engagement and will protect Shao Jiang. If you are willing to continue to stay here as our guest, we will be more than happy to host you. Okay. We admire your sense of righteousness. We will prepare gifts for you to take back. We will find a suitable date for Xiao Jiang. You and us to go and pay our respects to the late king of Xi. Man, everything just wants to yell outside. Give me a hot sec.
Okay, I'm back. Okay, do, do, do. Xiao Zhang will be greatly saddened. We will take good care of her. So please, do not worry. I mean, I'm also a girl, so, like, I think that's fine. Chen Feng. Chen Zai. Follow Mr. Gongsun back and bring those maids from Chi to the palace. If Mr. Gongsun needs anything else, do your best to fulfill it. No. After Gong Su Yi leaves, I look at Wu Sushu. He just stands there without saying a thing, and I presume that it is a connotation of our Cold War. I secretly let out a sigh. I guess I will need to take the initiative to break the ice. Prime Minister, what do you think about the situation in the Kingdom of Qi? Qi mm. We think that you are right. Please summon all the important ministers of the court for a discussion. No. Since Nung already has strategic plans for the North, we should have adequate intelligence in that area. Right now, the Tian, Bao, Guo, and Gao clans in Xi are vying for the throne, and it will be a good opportunity to swoop in on them. But the Kingdom of Xi is a strong country with a long history, and Ning might not win if the four clans were to combine their strength. Then, there's Xiaojiang. Since my engagement with her is not yet officially recognized, I'll be pressured to give her up if the Tiang, Tian clan asks for her. If I were to take the moral high ground before the Tiang clan does, I'll be forced to go to war against the Tiang clan for their treason. For their treason. The ministers and I start to debate over the pros and cons of this matter until late into the night and to exhaustion. There's still no clear direction of what we should do and we agreed to re reconvene at a later time to continue our discussion. After the ministers have left, I close my eyes and rub my temples for a moment before starting the arduous task of clearing my desk. Although it isn't my job to do it, I want to take this opportunity to organize my thoughts. I stretch out my hand to pick up a bamboo scroll, and another hand holds it down on the other end. Excuse me? Prime Minister? Wusushu silently helps me pick up and put away the books and stationery which lie scattered across the floor. His white hair reflects the orange glow from the lamps, making him look less cold and stern. It moves my heart. Perhaps like me, he also wants to reconcile our differences. He better! I swear, if he throws out another accusation, I'm gonna be even more ticked off at him. In the past, Prime Minister would frequently accompany us to our studies till late into the night, and wake us up early in the morning to practice our martial arts like sleep was not a, was not needed. About the other day. Ah! Ha! Why? Cheng Feng, this is the second time you've interrupted us today. Oh my god, you gotta be kidding me. You gotta be kidding me. Why have you not broken the door in to save her? Ah. Girl, Prime Minister, we will go and come back soon. Dot dot dot. More dots. Princess Xiaojiang, do you intend to burn down our palace? More dots. Xiaojiang! 
，你放心，我只是烧掉了姐姐哥哥的心。Oh no. We're preparing to pay homage to the memory of the King of Shi. Shi, Xiao Jiang, open the door and let us discuss this. No. No. Speak. Xiao Jiang hopes the hope will remain in the Qin dynasty, with his brother close by. No. No! We finally... <laughs> you haven't even been here for that long. What the heck? I feel something terribly amiss after hearing the calmness in Xiao Jiang's voice. With a deep breath, I kick down the door that is blocked by a stack of furniture. Let me in. Xiao Jiang is shocked by the loud sound. She proceeds to take out her dagger and points it at her chest. In a copper basin next to her feet lies a few white rolls of paper that has almost finished burning. She looks determinedly at me through the whip speed white smoke. Her face is still wet with tears. What do you mean by this? <sighs> we have gotten news that the Tian clan wishes to crown your brother's son as the new king. How can you say that your kingdom has perished? Do you think that will give you great or yeah? Do you think that will give you great words of wisdom in order to talk to you out of this? We are not who you think we are. Are we gonna strip? I give a cold laugh and grab Xiao Jiang's hands as I brutally push the blade half an inch closer to her chest. Although the dagger did not even penetrate her clothes, Xiao Jiang keeps struggling without any success of freeing herself as she looks at me in shock. Do not worry. If you stab yourself here, you will pierce your heart and the blood will flow out quicker. You will not have to suffer for long. Kind of getting a little... little questionable here. Since we're prepared to hold a memorable service for the King of Shi, it will be convenient to prepare your burial at the same time. You will never know as to whether Gao Sun Yi will take your body away or not. We will deal with it however we please. Saying this, I push the dagger closer towards her. The dagger is now piercing her skin. The blood is yet to be seen. Xiao Tian gasps in pain. Are you frightened? Then let us help you. When she sees me taking a breath and about to use strength, she lets out an ear-piercing scream. The maids who were trembling by the door suddenly find the courage to cover Xiao Jiang's body with theirs. The dagger falls onto the bed with a clear, crisp ring as I loosen my grip. Princess Xiao Jiang, it is only when you have truly tasted the perils of a life-or-death situation that you truly broaden your horizons. Xiao Jiang looks up at me with her eyes full of tears for a moment, then she jumps into my arms, bawling. I stroke her head gently, as feelings of pity for her starts to well up in my heart. When I was young, my father, mother, and brothers used to spoil me with hugs. Although I have forgotten what it feels like to be hugged after all these years, I am now comforting others with it. After quite a long while, when she gradually ceased her crying, she starts to wriggle and squirm in my arms like a little shivant cat. The maids who are watching by the side start to feel a little awkward, so after tidying up the place, they take their leave. Suddenly, the shivet, I'm, 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 I'm gonna assume it's shivet cat, goes rigid as she looks up at me from within my arms with an expression of doubt. You have noticed? What? What are with the animals today? 
there was like ambulant noises and sirens earlier uh and like something must be up around my area or something i have no idea all i know is that i want to play games <laughs> we were only scaring you do not worry she's blushing she bites her lower lips as she puts her hand on my breasts and gives me a good squeeze gives them a good squeeze my bad <laughs> i've long passed the age of ignorance the prime minister and chen feng have always been broad-minded have been broad-minded interesting and frank about such things so xiao jiang's action does not faze me instead she's the one who is shocked she stares at me and puts her hands down then in a whisper she asks me you promised to keep it a secret you cannot even tell your mates. Five years ago, when my three elder brothers were killed, my father was worried that the throne would fall into someone else's hands and that Nung would perish. So he had me take my brother's place as crown prince. In the battle between Nung and Yue, my father was killed. And I became the king of Nung. In the beginning, everything was difficult. Political affairs, the six arts of education, swordplay. I had to learn everything. And I had to learn it fast or else. The prime minister would really have my hide. Every day left me feeling so tired that I wouldn't have the energy to worry about such things. But what I truly worried about was whether or not I'd be a good king of Nung, and if I'd be able to fulfill my brother's last wishes. I was very close with my brothers, so the things that they cannot protect and cherish, I will do so in their stead. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Xiao Zheng let out a smile as she hugs me tightly again. Being on this emotional roller coaster has tuckered her out, and it isn't long before I hear soft snoring from within my arms. I gently place her on the bed and exit the room. What's up? Chen Feng holds the phoenix dagger and offers it to me. I shake my head. I'll let you hold on to it. Give it back to Xiao Jiang when she wakes up. Yay, thank you. Just in case, you better keep watch over the princess. Chen Feng has more to say, but he suddenly looks past me and gives a hand-on-hand -hand salute. I turn around to see a tall, strong figure leaning against the rails. We step towards him, and Cheng Feng does not follow us. Wu Sishu and I walk in silence. After a few turns, we come to a corridor with a view of Gu Shu City at night. I subconsciously stop there. Prime Minister, take a look. Dang, look at our outfit. We look dang fine. Looks more Western than than Eastern, but I still like it nonetheless. The cool summer breeze brings to mind a tender picture of the city in black ink. Wu Sushu and I stand alone uh, along the corridor silently as we gaze into the distance, watching the lights of the city going out here and on there. Going out here and on there. That's a weird way to phrase that. Today... We imitated, uh, imitated, imitated, yeah. <gasps> oh, okay, sorry, it took me a moment. I... <clears throat> Today we imitated the Prime Minister poorly to save Princess Xiao Jiang's life. Xiao Jun, Did you see all of that? Chen Dan Xing Xiao Jiang Gongzi Zuo Chu Shao Shi, Bian Gen Lai La, Qing Xiao Jun, 
Shu Chen Shi Li. We've embarrassed ourselves in front of the Prime Minister. Seeing Xiao Jiang reminds us of the time when we were also young, hasty, and ignorant. Perhaps it also made the Prime Minister remember the time when we were timid and weak. Is that not why you gave us that stab then? We must have let you down. We are here today as the King of Nung Fu Chai. Fu, Fu Chai? Because you have worked hard at protecting and supporting us. The Prime Minister works hard for the Kingdom and is like a father to us. That is something that we shall never forget. That day, we were just angry to the point of being muddled, and we said things without giving it a thought. So please, forgive us. We have thought about it. The Dragon God hates our kingdom to the point of wanting to exterminate us, hence danger will come at us at any time. We cannot rest, especially since the seal on my chest keeps getting worse. We do not even know if we have 10 more months to live. That is why we think the best course of action is to put in all our efforts into killing the Dragon God once and for all. Why are we holding hands? Ew. <laughs> we understand what you mean. We only hope that the Prime Minister can sympathize with us. We did not reject your suggestion on a mindless swim. Although we differ in our methods, our goal has always been the same, with the peace and prosperity of the Kingdom of Nung. Ah, look at our little smile. We're so cute. We're so cute. Our blue eyes, our long hair, our cute outfit. Don't know why we're holding hands. Naughty. Big naughty. Wu Shu Shu thinks about it silently for a bit before letting out a sigh. Then he gently takes my hand. Chen Cong Lai, Dou Yu Shao Jun Tong Xing. Eel. Although he says no more, seeing twinkles of gentle lights reflecting in his eyes makes me happy. It seems that this night of a myriad, myriad of twinkling lights will forever be etched into the hearts and minds of the Prime Minister and I. Ew. I don't want him plastered in my memories, thank you very much. <laughs> After the memorial ceremony, Gong Su Yi will, pr will bring the rest of his envoy back to the Kingdom of Qi. Although Xiao Jiang weeps bitterly at the memorial ceremony, everything goes smoothly without a hitch. She never mentions anything about wanting to die, nor giving a clear indication if she wants to stay or go. I arrive at her chamber wanting to discuss that issue with her, but I bump into Yi Guang, who is just stepping out of her... her chamber? Oh, stepping out of her chamber, okay. In his arms. Well, in his arms is a messy bundle of bamboo scrolls, cloth, and silk. I mean, sure, why not? You're not going there for leisure? Oh? I was knew you were smart, you bookworm. Yi Guan tilts his head questionably. Seeing that, Xiao Jiang starts to laugh. <laughs> True. <laughs> this man is too carefree. Please forgive him, Princess Xiao Jiang. Since we have something to discuss with Princess Xiao or with Princess Xiao Jiang, we should go there too. It did not seem like he rested well. So when we said that we would just be visiting Princess Xiao Jiang, he agreed to rest in his chamber. I, I personally would check him now. Sorry to trouble you. Let's go. Like, that seems fishy. Hello. Like, if they're saying it's fishy and that they're going to check later, that means something's definitely going on.
Why is the Centron holding us back? He's not sneaking in. Oh my goodness. Okay, fine, whatever. The Centron gives us a helpless look and he sounds troubled. Well, guess what? He's right next to me and we're gonna go in. Mr. Shi is the head priest of Nung, so he can come and go as he pleases to the Mausoleum Temple. Ah, we had like this like slight bonding moment that was a little awkward yesterday, last night. Come on! Uh, I turn my head to find the source of that voice. It is indeed Wu Shi. He gives Yi Guan a look of dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction before glaring at the Centron. Thinking that we have just made up, I have no intention on starting another argument with him. Mr. Shi and Princess Xiaoxiang want to share their plans on repairing the sword pond with us. We thought it would be better if we did that at the site itself, so we brought them here. <gasps> Thank you! Thank you! Oh! Jesus! <laughs> Seeing that Wu Sushu is not pursuing the matter, the Centron tells his men to clear the way. Thank you! Due to, due to the miasma, the outside of the mausoleum temple was damaged so badly that the entrance was blocked. Only the path to Sword Pond was still usable. Just when I think of entering, Wu Sushu stops me. And I would have lost my life if it wasn't for him. Jesus, who is just you? I thought we had... I thought we had something, man. What the heck? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, come along. Come along. Come along. Follow us. There's a danger at the... A bit the bit. There's a danger that the dragon god will come and take the sacred ding. We should first secure the sword pawn, and the only people who can do that would be Yi Guan and Princess Xiaojiang. Prime Minister, you should come with us, and we promise you that we will be more careful and not get hurt like the last time. I don't feel called out because I barely drink water. <laughs> For some reason, I just don't like drinking water. Speaking of water, I have iced tea. Off to the side. I'll drink that real quick. Ah, so good. I love tea. Wusushu lowers his hands in silent agreement to go with us to the sword pond. Let's see. The mess of sacred di uh, sacred swords and broken chains are still lying all over the place. The sacred ding looks damaged and rusty. I don't want to get close to the sacred ding, so I stop at the entrance. Yi Guang, what was the pre preventive measure that you were talking about? Care to elaborate? Wu Sushu gives a cold snort and I tug at his sleeve. I do not want him to voice his opinion so hastily. Chetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetchetch
。我在楚国生活了十几年，关于德鼎，还有什么秘密，不曾告诉过先王和施家夫妇？推论不可做实证，我想要到镇中才能确定。少君，五相国，请。I am so curious. The Wu Shu blocks the way. Just let them do it, man. At this point, we have no other options. Come on. He looks coldly at Yi Guang and the silver strings in his hands. The atmosphere has become oppressive. It is no wonder that Wu Shu was nervous about this, as I almost died here in that last battle. However, Yi Guang is calmly waiting by the side of the Ding, like we are departing for a vacation to the spiritual realm. It looks like he will not be able to convince Wu Shu. Um, uh, I'm gonna save real quick because I have no idea. I can't, I feel like persuading him would be better. Prime Minister, if it had not been for Yi Guan, we would have been killed by Zen, Zen, Zen Dang on the on the day he broke free from the Ding, so why would he be bothered to save us then, only to kill us today? Eh? Eh? Yi Guan has always done his best for Nung, and even more so, for the good of the common people. We believe in him, and so would the Prime Minister please believe in us too? Hearing this, Yi Guan raises his hands and greets Wu Sushu with a hand-on-hand -hand salute. His usual easygoing manner suddenly turns a lot more solemn. After a while of silence, Wu Shishu sighs and makes way for me. Thank you. I nod at Wu Shishu and walk towards the sacred ding. Yi Guan takes the silver strings and winds it around our wrists before tying the other end to the ears of the ding. This is not a blood blood. This is my blood blood. You don't need to be afraid of it. Okay, I'm going to twist you. Saying that, Yi Guang gently pulls on the silver string, and the string begins to give off a dazzling light. I th I thought we wouldn't be transported. Oh man. In the blink of an eye, we were transported to the highest point of the big city. Below us, undead soldiers dot the main streets. The north and east of the city are still covered in fog, while the smashed city gates lay to the west. Xiang Guo. Oh, he's an heir too. I didn't know that. Yeah, yep. the dark array outside the city has already been broken. So are all these undead soldiers the remnants of that jerk's ploy? <laughs> Yi Guan told me that the scenery and the people and objects inside the magical array are only a representation of the state of the Ding. The undead soldiers and monsters that attacked the city were also a representation. So what remains are the representations of the evil aura that has yet to be purified, right? Nope, I do not remember. Oh. We remember. I don't remember. <laughs> yes. We stipulated that the city rep rep represents the Ding of Virtue and the Sacred Dagger. I think that the city is also formed from the artifact's own thoughts, right? That is why we can see the resident, uh, resident spirits in the specific likeness of the Phoenix and the White Tiger. No. So they are. So they were indeed protecting the same big city. Huh. My heart gives a tiny leap of surprise. I've always thought that they were similar cities due to the fact that they were both secret artifacts with very similar thoughts. So how did this big city come about? I lean over the rails to see the blurry center of the city more clearly, but I am held back by my waist by Wu Sushu and Yi Guang, and it looks like neither of them want me to be the first to let go. Er, and... 
And it looks like neither of them want to be the first to let go. There we go. My bad. And there are some things that you should let go of, good sir. Oh. Look at your little blush. She's so cute. I love her. So cute. Like her like little waist thingy. I like hot. I just like her in general. I like how, how it's like flowers. Ugh. Just ugh. so cute. Yes, yes. Since the situation is not dire at the moment, we hope to be able to understand this place a little more. Saying that, I hurry away from those two and take Xiaojiang to the stairs that leads down to the city. Xiaojiang is blessing quite a bit, but I'm guessing that I'm not doing any better. Took me a moment. After going down to the city, we see a few undead lingering about, although they are not as scary as when they were being controlled by the... Oh man... Qi. their bodies are still giving off a black smoke that would make one's skin crawl. Of course. Can we get rid of the evil aura by killing those undead soldiers? Yi Guan shakes his head. Oh no, I'm supposed to recognize them? I struggled for a long while to think of who these undead could be, but other than feeling disgusted from their rotting flesh, I cannot think of who they are. Oh. I'm shocked. I take a closer look at their torn and tattered armor, and true enough, they are wearing the armor of the Nung's army. What are they? Yi Guang doesn't answer me. Wu Sishu also looks troubled because amongst the undead, there are quite a few that were wearing the armor of the Chu's army. Even though Yi Guan is not speaking much, we are slowly beginning to realize the truth of the matter. These undead soldiers are not just animated by the evil aura, but also by the souls of the dead, right? <laughs> Nah. Wu Sushu and I are left speechless. Nah. Dang, okay. <laughs> the Kingdom of Nung and the Kingdom of Chu were at war for decades. The war for the Ding of Virtue was so fierce that even the capital of Chu was invaded, and it ended when the King of Chu fled his kingdom. Hence, it shouldn't be too shocking that the Ding of Virtue is haunted. Hmm. Prime Minister, have you realized that we've not seen a single ghost from the Shu clan? Bianchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuchuch
I can do that. As Wu Shishu stands in front of me, he prepares to draw his sword, only to find a sword missing, just like me in the past. <laughs> just <laughs> now I can't stop thinking about the turtle that's like <laughs> <laughs> she puts her fingers to her lips as she blows an ear piercing whistle which acts as a summoning spell a ball of golden red flame descends and clears the area of undead soldiers creating a space where only a few people can stand <laughs> Oh my goodness, he's smiling. Wow. Oh, yeah, the male birds are always more pretty. Oh. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. You'll be fine. Everything will be fine. Princess Xiaojiang. After wiping the tears from her eyes, she shoots me a determined look. You got it. I can do that for you. <laughs> Mm-hmm。如果不能报仇，我现在活着就只剩虚无了。It's okay, it's okay. Xiaojiang, we understand your pain, but look at these restless spirits. Whether you win or lose, the cost of a war is thousands of lives. As the king of Nung, we will not endanger the lives of our citizens, and we also do not wish to see your kingdom in such a state as well. Before Xiaojiang can reply, a slight tremor suddenly shades from under our feet, a disturbance erupted through the undead soldiers that surrounds us. Although their rotting bodies can no longer speak, their cries still ring out. Phoenix that has, uh, yeah, that has cleared a space for us also suddenly takes off towards the bridge. We too follow it in hot pursuit, and from out of nowhere, a skeleton over ten feet tall appears. The phoenix flies straight at its head, as its intention, as it intends to stop the giant skeleton from crossing the bridge. Not to be outdone, the skeleton grabs the undead soldiers at its side and prepares to beat down the phoenix. The phoenix just takes to higher skies. You got it. Uh, no. How do you do that? Waste thine hand. Loud sound effects there. Excuse me. Yi Guan made a small nick on my finger, and a white cloud appeared in midair, and from that cloud- Ooh! Excuse me. And from that cloud jumps out the white tiger. You're looking much better now. The white tiger gives a growl as he pounces toward the skeleton. Under the attack of the two beasts- Ow, that was loud once again. The skeleton starts to crumble. One of its hands falls towards the bridge, and the phoenix is unable to catch it in time. Suddenly, a bright light appears from the bridge and blinds us for an instant. Oh no. When we open our eyes, the tall skeleton and the undead soldiers that surrounded us were gone. What... what happened? Oh? Wasn't the power stolen by the Dragon God's followers? Oh? What? Wait a minute. Then this big city. Hey? Hey? 
Yi Guan's words made Wu Shushu and I exchange looks of surprise, but deep down, we don't feel all that shocked. Just then, the power that pur purified the evil aura was much more powerful than the magical power before. This new power feels like a warm spring day, calming and comforting. Then, or not then, wow. Phoenix and White Tiger that were up in the air landed in front of us side by side. This is my first time seeing these two beasts together, and they look very uh, intimate as they rub their heads against each other. What? Xiao Okay, I wasn't sure if I could continue or not, but I wanted him to say what he would say in this line, so... Oh, it's these guys! <laughs> uh, da -da -da -da. Of course the music goes out now. Huh. What about the phoenix that's right next to us? I struggle to think back, and after a long while, I can only shake my head. Wu Sishu also mulls over it and gives no reply. Xiangguo所言并无虚假，问题出在这几百年间，从未有人亲眼见过真正的得顶，只能靠零散的资料去猜测，包括我的父母。楚国大鼎在外形上的确铸成了得顶的样子，也是施家人平生所见最强大的神
，因为被中弹下毒中，害了哥哥。Uh, uh, what? Seeing her so heartbroken, the phoenix lowers its head and mourns quietly. What? Oh, she took a breath and then just cut off. 可正因为动荡中，只有奇功和朱雀剑一直陪伴你，你才会念念不忘报仇之事，对吗？天下哪有用怀中珍宝换空气的道理？哦，哦 ，bright light. Yi Guang gives her a gentle smile. With a wave of his hand, he turns the beautiful bird, big bird into a tiny sparrow and gently places it in, uh, places it in Xiao Jiang's hands. <laughs> Baby, no, it's okay, it's okay. Xiao Jiang cradles that ball of fluff in her hands as she cries until her tears choke back her sobs. Xiao Jiang, 抱歉，你这次拿不到朱雀剑了。Yeah, how are we gonna take care of the dragon god now? No, you are right. We will be lying if we say that we do not want the sacred artifact that we have been so desperately searching for. But there are many ways to borrow the power of the Ding of Virtue other than seizing it to serve our own selfish ends. Otherwise, would we not be any better than the Dragon God? The Phoenix Dagger might be better off in the hands of a powerful mage like Xiao Jiang. In addition, if we would use the lives of the people to gamble on such a venture, Meng might just perish even without the help of the Dragon God. Or, yeah. Hu <laughs> Xiaojun. It's okay, it's okay. Once again, we feel the tremors as the white tiger looks towards the western gates and starts to get restless. There we go, there's our music. No, something is going on at the western gates. Let's go there. Hearing this, the white tiger lowers his body in front of me, as if asking us to climb onto its back. His back. Wu Xiaojun, I'll help you. You got it. Xiao Jian releases the tiny sparrow into the sky, and it becomes the majestic and beautiful phoenix again. With the help of the two of the two great spirits, we get to the western gates in record time. The undead soldiers that were loitering in the streets now rush towards the city gates. What is that? Seeing what is happening at the western gates, the white tiger gives a low roar as the phoenix circles up above. A large skeleton absor is absorbing all the little restless spirits at its feet and starts to grow larger in the process. He pounds at the western gates again and again with the intention of destroying them completely. Yi Guang, don't we need our weapons this time? <laughs> Then what should the rest of us do? I said, Shao Jun just to the last one to kill him. You and Xiang Guo are waiting for me here. Ah, and don't let the white tiger come. It's too big. Still. 
That's a funny excuse. He's too big. <laughs> He'll be in the way. Just after Yi Guang finishes his sentence, I hear an angry roar. Wu Sushu and I, uh, unanimoniously hasten to start stroking that big white cat. That sounded a little weird. Yi Guan acts like nothing happened and jumps onto the big fish that he has summoned as it makes its way towards the skeleton. What the heck is with my dogs? The battle looks more like a beautiful coordinated dance as their colors of green and red fly around. Soon, the joints of the skeleton are tied up with silver strings, and when Yi Guang gives a little pull, it collapses uh, into a heap of ruin. Xiao Zheng flies back down and lands next to us while Yi Guang lands on the head of the skeleton. He gently places his hands on the skeleton's glabella, where the evil aura seems to be coming from, and starts to sing a spell. When he does that, the evil aura dissipates into thin air, and the skeleton crumbles into tiny stardust. The unintelligible groans gradually turns into a heartbreaking chorus. When I did leave, Willow swayed in the breeze. On my way back, snow gently falls on my tracks. The long journey had hunger and thirst besieged me. My heart aches terribly. Does anyone know how it came to be? The stardust flies towards the sky, or towards the part of city walls where they have collapsed and lay gaping like an open wound. As it gathers, as it gathers there, the gaps in the wall gradually heal themselves, and they soon become as good as new. Those restless spirits without a place to return to have finally found a place where they belong, as they slowly heal their broken hearts. Now is it? Wow. Feeling a little overwhelmed by that scene just now, I walk before the sacred ding in a dreamlike state and perk my finger with the dagger that Yi Guang hands over to me. The moment I press my bloodied finger onto the sacred ding, it rust its rusty and tarnished appearance starts to fade away and it becomes clean and shiny new again. Can the white tiger return with this? Let's go with your plan then. But to think that we have gone in circles only to come back to the topic on how we are going to find the other parts of the Ding of Virtue. 既然已经知道了大成的意向所指，那么也不会太难。When the silent Wu Shishu decides to finally speak, I thought he was going to criticize me again, so I anxiously look at Yi Guang. However, Yi Guang still looks as calm and collected as ever. 我想去浩京，既然大鼎是在那里被分解的，说不定会有关于青龙、玄武。Huh. Princess Xiaojiang. This way, maybe a little arrogant. But the Qi Guo has no longer me as a But the journey is long, and you may meet the Dragon God's followers, so we better send some of the royal guards to go with you. But there is still the Dragon God. Oh. Oh, he brought it back on us. <sighs> Very well. We understand. We will leave everything in your hands, head priest. Well, 
，尤其是勾践。勾践，哒哒哒。诺。Night has fallen when we return to the palace. Although Wu Sushu is still very cold and distant towards Yi Guang, he no longer looks at him with suspicion and hatred. This is a change worthy of a celebration. Shao Jun, from where did he come? Are you okay, good boy? Are you okay, good boy? Yan <laughs> Feng, what are you doing hiding behind that pillar? You gave us quite a scare. Shao Jun, answer me. Tiger Hill. 知道了，真高台。Please hold on, Chen Feng. It was on the spur of the moment that we decided to take Princess Xiao Jiang out to them, prove her mood. Since the Prime Minister was with us, we did not ask you to come along. Xiao Jun is Jun, Chen Feng is Chen. We are not obliged to ask Chen to explain. Anyway, Xiao Jun is fine. Okay. 少君何时这么顾念臣的心情了？呃、uh, ，excuse me， what？ I have never seen this expression before. Who are you？ A gust of wind blows across us, and under the flickering lights of the lamp, there's something twisted in Chen Feng's expression. 除了对你忠诚，我不知道还能为你做什么。嘿嘿，大概你也不需要我做什么。哎。Uh, your eyes are still hazed over. Um, what is going on? I knew something fishy was going on. Xiaojun. Yi Guang, it is so late now, so why aren't you rest resting? I have some things I want to talk to you about. Chen Gaotui. No, 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 no. Don't you leave. Don't you leave. Yo, Yi Guang, look at him. No! I like both of them. <sighs> Something's up with Chen Chen Feng. I I, I want to go for a route with Yi Guang if there is possible for routes in this game. I don't even know anymore. But like, uh, something's up with him, and I want to know what's up with him, and I feel bad. Chen Feng also wishes to discuss something with me. If your matter isn't urgent, can we talk about it in the morning instead? I turn my head around to see an empty corridor. Chen Feng probably went back to stand guard over my chamber as usual. Chen Feng, now that it is just the two of us, you can vent your heart's content. Or vent to your heart's content. Shao Jun is also in the city for one day. Shao Jun is more calm. Those are not important. You have heard me whine about things before, so now it is only natural for me to return the favor. Okay, his eyes are normal again. As long as it is not about the threat, uh, about the oh. <laughs> As long as it's not about the treats from Yue, even I want to eat their treats. I just feel that I can't do anything for you. I'm going to get rid of this girl from the battle. Sun Wu is also going to kill me. Do you want me to be my friend? But I don't have a friend. I can't defend those people who are living in the world. I can't protect you. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. But you've already done so much for me. Not only have you been by my side for all these years, if it hadn't been for you blocking that blow for me three years ago, when the palace underwent a change, I would have been killed by that old dog, Fu Gai. I should have first hand. It's not your fault. I was the one who ordered you to stand down. Before I became the king of Nung, Fu Gai was a good uncle to me, but I don't hate him as much as I hate the Dragon God. If it wasn't for the Sacred Seal, everything would not have gone to hell in a handbasket. 
所以你就连着恨自己吗？啊、uh, ，I've never hated myself。那你为什么不好好惜命 ？Although Chen Feng's tone of voice sounds angry, his eyes hold a certain pain and sadness in them. 陈建元。No, uh, yeah. No, you are not just the king of Wu Chai's bodyguard, but you are also a friend and brother to Li. It is my fault that I cannot explain myself well. Although I hate being a monster that is neither male nor female, after everything that I've gone through, I realize that being bitter about it will not help the situation. Therefore. I will embrace being the king of Nung, so we have a chance of defeating the Dragon God, to take back and protect everything he threatens to destroy. That is why I do my best. The reason why I'm willing to put myself in danger is not because I want to die, but because I wish to live. That is why I cannot give up the fight. You can't tell me that I'm sorry. Don't leave me alone. 看不见你，保护不了你，我可能会疯掉的。What nonsense are you talking about? Fine. You have my promise. I hold up my pinky, but Chen Feng takes my hand instead. 你身上的盟誓已经够重了，不用再和我约定什么。我只希望，有一天，即使你真的面临不得不丧命的境况，我能死在你之前。Baby, no. I understand. Chen Feng finally smiles at me, and I can see his look of relief. I stand up and stretch myself. We are beat. Prepare us a bath and a change of clothes. A few days later, while discussing some official matters with Wu Sushu, Xiao Jiang and Yi Guang come to ask for an audience. They have already finished preparing for their journey to Haoding, Haoding, in order to avoid any conflict with the Kingdom of Qi. The two of them are going to follow Go, Gong Sun Yi up north, and once they are out of Nung, they will head west. When we are saying our goodbyes, a loud noise comes from the direction of my chamber. Chen Feng opens the door to see a few people in the corridor trying to hold back a person that they were clearly fighting off. It is the King of Yue, Guo Jiang. Guo Jian, Wu Gong is not Wu Qiu. You are talking nonsense. At least there is a Qin Shi Master. We are here. Speak. Qin Shi Master has called the Qin Shi Master to fight the Qin Shi Master. But they came to tell us. 齐国战船开始在港口集结了，恐怕是要对吴开战。啊！ dot 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 dot。The atmosphere suddenly becomes tense, like a drawn bowstring, silent and deadly. No one was expecting that the kingdom of Qi would be the first to make a move. Wu Sushi is the first to break the silence with cold laughter. 哼，齐国一向自诩知礼好义。如今却连战书都懒得下了吗 ？Surprise attack, man! He shoots Guo Jiang a look before looking at Xiao Jiang. Being young, Xiao Jiang go. Uh, Xiao Jiang thought that Wu Sushu was criticizing the Kingdom of Chu before, bleh, for being unprincipled and turns away in shame. Guo Jiang. Oh my goodness, so many names. Has quicker understanding and reflect as he gets down on his knees and bows before me. 罪臣，愿率越国水军为先锋。如果情报有误，后果自当由罪臣承担。Wars are not fought on a whim. Chen Feng, please pass down the order to investigate the movement of Qi's naval forces. Have the rest of the people wait until we have convened with the ministers before making any other preparations. 
to think that it was only a few days ago that I was arguing with a few of the ministers on whether we should use the assassination of the king as an excuse to invade their kingdom. Now, they have brought the war to our doorstep. The spies and the traitors that are doing business at the harbor for the kingdom of Chi have confirmed that Chi's naval forces have headed south with the intention of invading our kingdom. My dear ministers, this means war. Why are they so loud in this chamber? My goodness. Chigorin Intriguing, I say. Woman Kai Tong Gusu, Yun Okay. Gu Gushu. Okay. It will deplete the treasury if we support the army from such a distance. It is not efficient to deploy so many people just to transport the provisions across the river. We should send the supply troops up north first and have them collect the supplies along the Han River to add to their provisions. That would also save them some time preparing for battle. The King of Yue, Guo Jiang, has agreed to lead his naval force, forces into battle for us. Perhaps we can have him prepare extra supplies for us. What has he done to prove that, though? Prime Minister, let us not discuss what matters, what manner of man Guo Jian is. Instead, let's discuss how we can use Yue's naval forces as our first line of defense. What are the pros and cons of that for the Kingdom of Ning? Excuse me, get that smirk off your face, please and thank you. Well, Chanchang Wusishu, listen to Bopai and what he says. He... You need to stop being suspicious, my, my dude. Yue Guo Gumban may sing Yung Kuyen. Tai Zai Dongyan Ye Chigo Yue Guo in the Kui. Mo Fei Bei Yue Guo Mei Ren. Hong Dao Wang La Tang. Oh my goodness. Wu Kan Xiang Guo. Kung Pa Ye Shi Ji Hen Xian Wang the Shi. Tai Ju Jue Xiang Xin Yue Guo Ba. Hm? Hm? That is enough. We are going off topic. Whether we borrow the naval forces of Yue, we have to prepare ourselves for battle, so we will go according to what we first discussed. We will assemble the naval forces at Han City, and we will get the supply troops to gather up supplies along the way. They only need to gather a portion of the supplies while we send over the rest from the granaries. Yeah, granaries at Gushu. We need to start our preparations now if we want to remain calm about it. Let's not waste any more time with pointless discussions. Dismissed. You freaking better. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh... 
I'm gonna let this shit go. I don't feel like dealing with him. He's he's so annoying to deal with. Like he's constantly like suspicious, suspicious. Hmm. I do not know. Hmm. And I'm like, oh my god, just please stop. And I'm sick and tired of it. I don't even like him anyway. After the minister's excuse, uh, after the minister, how many times am I gonna repeat that? After the ministers excuse themselves, I lean back into my chair, only to sit straight up again immediately. I cannot afford to relax right now, or right before the big battle, especially since the Kingdom of Yue will be joining us in this fight. This is a great opportunity to let Aati return back to Yue, and for our two kingdoms to mend our relationship. There are a lot of advantages for our alliance to go against a big kingdom like Qi. If we win the battle, it will eliminate a lot of the obstacles that will hinder our continual cooperation in the future. I have a slight hunch that if we were able to overcome the storm, we will be one step closer to breaking the sacred vow. In critical times, I and the Kingdom of Nung will need someone who can support from behind and not stab a knife into our backs. Adia, King of Yue, can can you really be one of the can you really be of one heart with King Fu Chai of Nung? Chapter ten, last chapter. Let's go. It is an auspicious day to send the troops off and to pray and offer sacrifice to ask for victory in this war. We are here today at the altar on the island of Lake Tai to offer up an animal that I had per personally killed with Yu Guang and to concentrate its blood. The aim is to become like the legendary Yellow Emperor when he defeated the powerful warrior king, Qi Yue. Qi, Qi Yue? Y Yue? We praise and beg the Yellow Emperor loudly for victory in this battle. In the midst of the black smoke from the burning sacrifice, Go Jian, Chen Feng, and I get aboard the Royal Navy ship, Yu Hong. Shao Jun, I and Shao Jiang Gongzi are going to Hao Jing. You be careful. Okay. Likewise. The war and the war between the kingdoms is more painful than we have encountered before. Take your food, to prevent illness. It's so weird. The quality keeps going fuzzy after like one second of popping up. Like it's good quality and then fuzzy quality as soon as the text is done. Interesting. The journey to Hao Jin is long and perilous. You should keep the amulet. Fine. You two must also come back safely. You got it. Prime Minister. Chen Zai. We are leaving you in charge of Gu Xu, Gu Xu, and the Kingdom of Neng now. Chen, be not fool Shao Jun Zhong Tuo. I give everyone gathered at the shore a hand-on-hand -hand salute before setting the white sails against the smoky wind as we snake along the river, heading towards the sea. See, now the... now it's crisp and clear. It might be because we were zoomed into the background. I th I th that's my theory. The loud, clear, low thumbs of the drums seem to rise and fall with the wind and the waves, making it sounds as if the last thunderstorm of summer is approaching. Tell them to be very careful when they reach the delta of the river as it forks into many distributaries. Dis distributaries? Our supply route needs to remain a secret. Good. General Xu Qing is an old naval personnel with a lot of experience. We trust his judgment. I take in a lung full of damp air as we near the river's mouth. It is clear that even with an outstanding ship like the Yi Huang, we are still an in uh, insignificant tiny fish compared to the wide seas. Chen Feng. 
This will be our first big battle since we were crowned, and we would be lying if we said that we're unperturbed. Hopefully. If they know that what they are doing is wrong in the eyes of heaven, do you not find it suspicious that they are still so anxious to start this war with us? Cheng Feng. Since you are Mr. Sun Wu's disciple, you might not be familiar with the ways of heaven. However, when it comes to battle tactics, you are second to none. So we are not convinced when you tell us that you do not know. You shush that right now. You shush. Shish. Chen Feng. Although you have accepted the position of commander of the royal guards because of the former king, we know that you are very talented. Be it commanding the troops at war or running the government in times of peace, there is nothing you cannot accomplish. <sighs> it is not a question of whether we command it of you or not. Have you never given a thought about what you want to do once the sacred vow is broken? It is not like we can keep you by our side forever. Oh. I am shocked and scandalized. Usually, he would continue with a joke, although Cheng Feng is not one to joke around. As someone who grew up with him, we have long past crossed that clear line between a king and a subject. I stare at him for quite a long while, but he does not say anything more. This leaves me feeling a little mystified. <clears throat> Cheng Feng, your wounds from the last battle have not completely healed yet. You've refused to stay behind at the palace to recuper recuperate. You should rest more on the ship before the battle begins. Ah. <laughs> Take out my fan. <laughs> huh? How dare you ruin the mood! How dare you! How dare! Dang it! No! No! <laughs> I'm gonna just, I'm gonna stop him! Go away, Ko Jiang! Get back here! Chen Feng! Chen Feng pauses but does not turn back and he walks directly towards the cabin. The image of Cheng Feng's retreating figure looks a little strange. He has always hated Guo Jiang, and without my orders, he has never chosen to leave on his own when Guo Jiang is around. That is why his actions now have made me a little perplexed. Perhaps I'm not the only one getting anxious about the battle. Maybe Cheng Feng, who has, also sh uh, who has always shown so much self-control, is also feeling a little uneasy. I hate you, but I also love you. You look very, very nice. I like your little headpiece. You are look, mm. chef kiss. So you're here to bid me farewell, Atiu. From now onwards, I will not be able to call you Atiu anymore. I need to call you the King of Yue. <laughs> I don't know how to feel about that. <laughs> There's no way I can do that. You're no longer Gojiang, a political prisoner of Neng, nor the guard of the mausoleum, Adia. I only hope that the king of Neng and the king of Yue will be able to put the past behind them and forget about taking revenge on each other. From now onwards, let's be good towards one another for another hundred years. <laughs> Oh? My goals have never changed, but after facing so many life-threatening dangers with you as we work against a common enemy, it made me think, and the kingdoms, kingdoms of <laughs> and the kingdoms of Nung and Yue not be like the other, be like the two of us. I have no idea. 
If you, as the King of Yue, is willing to bury the hatchet with me, and we can mutually treat each other with sincerity and respect, I will naturally guarantee that I will quell all opposition and overcome all obstacles to forge a better and more peaceful future with you. So quiet. You once asked me to trust you, and today, I'm willing to place my trust in you again. Trusting my life to you. Trusting that Nung and Yue can become like sworn brothers to bring about peace and prosperity to our two kingdoms. Atia, King of Yue, I trust you. Guljiang stares at me as if in as if deep in thought. From what I can see in his eyes, all the emotions and thoughts are coming together like an underwater whirlpool, hidden and deep. After a long while of consideration, he breaks out in laughter. Palm strike. I raise my hand to his and clap it against his hands three times. The small boat from the UA troops has also arrived and it anchors alongside the Yu Hong Yu Huang to come and pick him up. When Gold Jung returns to the UA's naval boats, he keeps to the plan. He orders Yue's naval boats to get into formation in front of the Ning's boats on the Han Canal before heading north along the Huan 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 hu, There's Hua and then I Hua 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 River towards the sea so that they can deal with the Chu's naval troops. I'm gonna have to look that one up. I've never dealt with I by itself. After sailing for a few days, we come to the last port before reaching the sea. At Yun Tai's Pass, both Nung and Yue's ships are docked here for repairs while we wait the arrival of the supply ships. Ooh, a new, a new shot. Interesting. Although the Kingdom of Nung is near the sea, most of our battles are fought on rivers, so we do not have much experience when it comes to fighting on the sea. While I'm discussing what to do after we are out at sea with General uh, Xu Chen, Chen Feng brings in a Yue troop scout into my cabin. <gasps> it is. After sending the scouts away, I quickly consult the map. According to our original plans, we should enter Lang Ya's waters to do battle with Xu's naval troops. I never thought that Xu's troops would travel so far that they had already attacked the towns along the river mouth. They are unimaginably fast. Chen Feng, where should the supply troops be at this point in time? Right now, the Chu troops are attacking at full force. We cannot wait until they get to the river's mouth to meet us. Set sail now. Chu Cheng and Chen Feng agree unhesitantly and immediately start to giving out or start to giving out the orders. I have seen many signs that things are not as it should be, and I have a bad feeling about this. It is time to prepare for an attack. Oh dang! Chen Feng! How many things are going on Xu Xiang's side? Xu the Chu troops are indeed anchored at the river mouth. Are all the scouts dead? Frick. Send the command to the UA troops. They must in uh, intercept the main naval troops from Chu and must not let them advance further south to attack our supplies. Also, send the scouts to the supply troops and tell them to wait at Yun Tai Pass. If the supply troops arrive here now, they would only help the Chi's troops troops increase their headcount of kills. A soldier comes stumbling towards Chen Feng and passes him a message. Chen Feng immediately goes white when he hears it. Oh my goodness, no! I feel like someone has punched the wind out of my lungs as my head starts to hurt. How far is Nan Yu from here? Ah. How did the Chi troops slip past us to get upstream? Here, 
Dang it. Dot, dot, dot. Something is not right. If there were to slip past us using a displit distributary, then how did they manage to stop our supply troops? We have a mole. I clutched at my chest and looked to the north. That is exactly the place where we were to meet the UA troops to have the fa have a face off with the Chi's naval troops. Because U.S. troops would also be meeting their own supply troops there, only one other person other than myself and a handful of generals know about that secret route. Can it be as Wushu said? At first, there were only few black dots on the horizon where the sea meets the sky. Soon, those black dots grow in numbers. The sound of battle seems to have stopped. I stare so hard at the sea so as not to miss even a single seabird. This is the result of me betting on my life. If I lose, I will be willing to die here at sea in this battle. We have finally come close enough to see the big ships, but we have yet to see the troops from Yue. Chen Feng, quick, see if it is the Yue's naval troops. I can't help but laugh out loud when Chen Feng remains expressionless. I immediately turn my thoughts on the supply troops, which are now in greater danger. Let the army to the right fall back to protect the supply troops. Use our central troops to replace the right troops. No. Leave the duties of leaving the leading the central army to Xu Qiang. His ex Experience in war is far more than ours, hence he will be more capable of reading the situation and reacting quicker than we would. How many ships is the Royal Guards using? Good. Then let's take these three ships to Nanyu. Sacrifices have to be made to deceive the enemy and to snatch their supplies back. We are just going to act as a decoy so as to let the supply troops escape. The Royal Guards are excellent defenders and fighters, so it should be fine. But once the Kingdom of Chu gets our supplies, they will be able to drag out the war. If that happens, we will undoubtedly lose the war and have a smaller chance of surviving. No! What is the point if we are not there to act as bait? It is better that you let Xu Xu Qiang know of our plans so that he may reassure the soldiers. Tell him that this is the plan to trap the enemy and to hold off all the Chu's troops that come his way. Chen Feng, now is not the time to get lost in thought. Now go. No, don't do that to me. Don't do the hazy eye thingy. What are you talking about at this point in time? If you do not want to come with us, you are welcome to stay with Xu Qing. No, baby, no. Why do you have the hazy eyes? No. Things are getting fishy, my dude. Things are getting fishy. Stop acting like this, please. For the love of everything that is holy, please stop. Saying this, Chen Feng jumps into a small boat waiting alongside the Yu Huang, and he leads uh, and he heads into the eh, in the direction of the right army. His actions are too strange, and while I would like to ponder more on what he meant, I don't have the luxury or time for that as we face the enemy, or luxury of time for that as we face the enemy. In no time at all, some of the ships fighting alongside General Xu Qiang. <sighs> Raise their banners up and let the center troops fall back to rejoin us as I order the Hu Yu Huang to turn back upstream. As I expected, the Chu troops start to chase after the right army, and I, as Chu, Chu Qiang, goes head on with them. Our ships clash with the en clash with the enemies as both sides, or at as both sides. I think it's at both sides. The flaming arrows seem to dye the sky and sea in a golden red color as they fly between ships. I grit my teeth as I heroically draw away from the battle and circle back to the distributaries. <laughs> Yu Huang is a large ship and thus it moves slowly. While we were desperately trying to get to Nan Yi, the supply troops already had some of their boats sunk and relied on few armed escort boats to defend against the attack. 
Just as the battle is getting too much for the Lung troops, they see the banner of Yu Huang and it renews their fighting spirit. Even the Chu's troops. Uh, the fact that Chu has the like apostrophe, apostrophe S as well is like throwing me off so hard every single time I say it. Even the Chu's troops that had them surrounded pause their attacks when they see the banner of the King of Lung. What are you waiting for? Come at the king if you dare. Shouting from the bow of my bow, I managed to irritate the Chu troops, as most of them turned their boats around and come charging at the Yu Huang. Withdraw! Yu Huang looks very, clums looks very clumsily when it turns around, which encourages the Chu troops to chase us even more. If only they knew that the distributaries of the hu Huai, hu Huai, Huai, river is muddy and has parts where one can easily run around if uh, run aground if they don't know the way that might have been a typo as expected after chasing us for half an hour a lot of the chi troops have uh, cheese boats have run up uh, ground along the distributaries and not to be beaten the chi troops send more ships after us while we play a game of hide and seek with the Chu troops, the sound of a distant horn reaches our ears. It is a sign that the rescue mission was a success. The Royal Guards took the opportunity while the Chu's troops were occupied to secretly help the supply troops escape with the provisions. Bypass the pursuers and return to the river mouth. Following the wind and currents, Yu Huan starts to speed up with while the Chu troops are encumbered with the escort boats of the supply troops. This enrages the Chu troops as they give up chasing after the supply troops and focus on coming after the Yu Huang instead. Oh shoot, now it's raining. It's raining? I look up to gaze at the river mouth. There is not a cloud in the sky when I left and now there is a sudden gathering of rolling black clouds and flashes of lightning uh, and flashes of lightning can be seen peeking from beto between the gaps in the clouds. No matter how unpredictable the weather can be at sea, it cannot be this strange, right? Ooh, cool effect. A frightening thunder comes down and parts the sea as I rise my, raise my hands to shield my eyes. After that blinding flash, the gathering of dark clouds becomes the Taotai. <gasps> Everyone around me is in an uproar while I lean against the mast, shocked beyond words. Not the Taotai. This... This thing can materialize in the real world? I can still remember how it disintegrated into thousands of pieces in the dark array. A cheer comes from the Chu troops who, while we were in a daze, has caught up with us. We will not make it back in time. Let us stand our grounds here with the people of Chu to do battle to the death. The people of Nung have always been strong and hardy. We even overpowered all the northern kingdoms. Why should we fear the play things of those filthy people of Chu? I draw out my sword and hack the side of the ship. The soldiers are shocked by my anger and quickly take up arms against the Chu troops as they assemble onto the deck. Because most of the royal guards want to protect the supply troops, the soldiers find themselves outnumbered and cannot beat back the Chu troops that keep flooding onto the deck. Chenfeng! Thank you, your eyes are still hazy. What? What's up with that? Please get better. You, you're not with Xu Xing? Oh. Chenfeng answers me with very gloomy expression. When a Chu soldier sees his comrades being killed, he comes charging at us. Chen Feng never bat an eye as he raises his sword and gives that soldier's head a hack. In an instant, that soldier splits into half as his shoulder uh, splits into half at his sold soldiers. Oh my god, shoulders! Jesus! Anyone who dares come at me are cut down one by one by Chen Feng as he dies. Everything, as far as I can see, in blood. Who is this person in front of me? My instincts are screaming at me to run away. A soldier from the Royal Guards noticed that there is something amiss and wants to stop Chen Feng when I unwittingly, uh, unwittingly shouted out, Chen Feng, stop! The sword that would have cut the Royal Guards' head in half slowly stops in midair. Chen Feng shuts his eyes as if in pain, and then he shoots me a look of evil hatred. Good. What is up with you? What are you going to do? 
When he sees me standing there motionless, he comes at me and throws me over his shoulder. Before I can even struggle, I feel my body falling. Eh? I never thought that I would fall into the water like this and only managed to get half a mouthful of air. Chun Peng holds me by my waist as he swims at a fast pace under the water like a fish. I take in a few mouthfuls of river water as my consciousness starts to fade. Da da da. <laughs> Chun Feng's face is only inches away. Even though we have always been close, this distance is a little too close for comfort. From this distance, I can look into his eyes to see a burning black flame that I've never seen before. It burns hot with madness, and yet cold with ruthlessness. Let us go. Are you sure about that? Quick, let go of us! Oh? Oh, did we just slap him? Send us back to the ship! If you are going to disobey our orders, we will kill you as the law stipulates. <laughs> what? Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. What? What? Oh no, did I play too much into him? Fine. If you are going mad, we will go mad with you. I draw my sword and hold it to Chung Feng's neck. He lets out a laugh of disdain and suddenly dodges the edge of my sword. I did not see when he drew his sword, but there's a cut in my armor. Although I can feel the adrenaline pumping through me, I am facing against a merciless warrior, and the best I can do is to defend myself. After a few, few blows, my armor is left in splinters with only a shoulder guard. Kill me with one st yeah, man. Kill me with one stab if you can. Chen Feng gives a dangerous laugh before coming at me with the hilt of his sword with the intention of hitting me in the stomach at full force. I know that if this blow lands on me, I wouldn't be able to stand up straight. Then all he needs to do is hit me uh, is to hit my neck from the back and I'll be knocked out cold. The only way to stop him would be to stab my sword deep into his chest, but I cannot bring myself to do that. In my moment of hesitation, it is now too late for me to react. Look at your clothes! So nice! You look so nice in your clothes. Princess Xiaojiang! We are all right. Chen Feng. Thank you, Princess. But why are you here? Wahiyuhir.我和西子入了西江不久，就发现被人跟踪了。先生逼问之下，跟踪者承认自己是齐国细作，但我们去浩京和吴奇之战并没有什么关系。齐国人矫健来，肯定不对劲。我们便掉头
感觉到了两股和龙神相似的邪气，所以就分头行事了。没想到，居然遇到你和陈峰在互搏。The Dragon God's presence. Are you talking about Chen Feng? He has always, er, he has been acting very strangely. Xiao Jiang kneels by Cheng Feng and feels the back of his neck as her face pales. She then nods her head with certainty. 没错，他身上的邪气相当严重，已经被侵蚀颇长一段时日了。I knew it. That is due to our own carelessness. We kept thinking that it was only a matter of time before he would recover after he came out of the dark array. 连我们身为巫祝的察觉不到。何况吴少君，原来陈峰也去了血迹镇，是因为被施了这种邪术。Typo. What kind of sorcery? 有一种异神术，可以混乱人的心智，达到控制他的目的。要在一夜之间让人性情大变，也不是那么容易的事。所以这等邪术都会寄生在人心的薄弱处，将不起眼的弱点慢慢扩大成心魔。No. Not my Cheng Feng. A demon in the heart. I gaze at Cheng Feng's pale face and feel an unbearable tightness in my chest. I have always thought that it is because he was grateful to my father and loyal to the country that he gave up his bright future to stay by my side as an attendant. I never thought that his concern for me would run so deep that it has become a demon in his heart. Thinking back, I am unable to count the number of times I've ignored his and. Entreaties and put myself in life-threatening situations. I've always assumed that between Yi Guang and I, and our determination, we would take down the powerful da dragon god. He must have been very hurt by this. Wu Shaojun, Chen Feng's head's magic has been shut for a while. I have to go to the Yuan Xizi. I'll go with you. Xiao Jiang and I drag Chen Feng and. Onto the little boat that she came in, and we quickly make our way to the Yi Huang. When the soldiers that are guarding the Yi Huang see me return in one piece, it raises their spirits greatly. They proceed to push back the enemy forces and return to the battle at the river mouth. Shortly after we meet up with the supply troops and leave the army, a report comes to me that Xu Chang commanded the whole army to retreat. Did we really lose? With a heavy heart, I look towards the fiery battle and the injured soldiers that are still fighting. Even if, even if we lose, we cannot let the Tao Tai do as it pleases. The closer we get to the river mouth that is ablaze with fire, the more retreating ships we come across. Surprisingly, there are quite a few boats from Chi amongst them. The soldiers on these ships have already lost their helmets and armor. They look terrified and flustered, and they do not seem interested in pursuing and taking over our ships. Hu Xiaojun, you see. That Tao Tai is attacking boats from Chi. Suddenly, the boat lurches forward with a gust of wind, and out from the waves of the river comes a big water sword that flies right at the Tao Tai. The water sword stabs the Tao Tai, leaving a big hole in the beast as it is. Is this going to be continued noise? Okay, good. It's not. As it's about to break off the mast on the boat from Chi, blood pours out from that hole, dyeing the whole ship black red. The Tao Tai can only roll around in pain, which causes big waves upon big waves to break out. The remains of the other ships crash into one another upon these waves. This makes it dangerous, as one of them might just crash into into the Yu Huang. Suddenly, a pale green figure emerges out of the floating wreckage as he floats to the bow of the Yi, Yu Huang. That figure is Yi Guang, and he is carrying yet another injured person. That person was none other than Xu Qiang. Shaojun, please let me heal Xu Qiang. Go ahead. As he says this, he cuts the other belt from General Xu's armor to wrap it around the wound to stop the bleeding. Thank you for your help, Yi Guang. My eyes follow Xiao Jiang's dumbstruck gaze to see the heavily wounded Tao Tai jumping into the sea and start to suck in all the wreckages, 
Even the screaming soldiers that had fallen into the water is to become its meal. This bloody and gory scene is very shocking. Evil aura covers up the flesh that... That the... That the... <laughs> was left exposed as new flesh quickly grows to fill up that hole that was left by the water sword. He's healing! Right. As Yi Wang finishes saying this, the Tao Tai takes to the skies and violently smashes the remaining ships of the Chi's fleet into two. There are almost no ships left unscathed at the river mouth, and the beast would definitely chase upstream. Wait, Yi Guang! We killed the Tao Tai once before in the Dark Array, so we might be of some help this time. If we wait for that beast to kill all of Nung's troops and sink the Yu Huang, will there still be a king of Nung? After helping me with the summoning spell with the silver string, Yi Guang jumps into a small boat to find the Tao Tai summoner. I take a knife to cut my hand and let the blood run down onto the amulet. With a bright flash that painted everything white, a white fog appears on the Yu, Yu Huang, and as the fog gathers, it turns into a large white tiger. The soldiers are so scared of the white tiger that they retreat to the furthest side of the ship, leaving only the white tiger, Xiao Zheng, and myself on deck. The white tiger opens its mouth wide. This scares Xiao Zheng so much so that she takes out her phoenix dagger, but it turns out that the white tiger just gives me a wet lick. <laughs> As Xiao Jiang finishes saying this, the white tiger growls softly at her, which scares her into clutching the dagger into her hands tighter. I rub the soft fur at the back of its neck. I will leave it to you to deal with the Tao Tai. The white tiger gives a roar before flying off towards the sea. The white and black figures clashing against each other as they, mo as they move the earth and shake the heavens and even change the color of the clouds. However, it hasn't been long since the white tiger has materialized, and it means that its body is not in the best not in the best of conditions. I worry that if it were not if it were to fall, it would leave the Tao Tai to attack Yi Guang, and I cut myself another time. Do not worry. This little bit of blood is nothing. When Xiao Jiang touches the edge of her phoenix dagger, a phoenix appears at the ship's bow with a blinding red flash. Even after seeing so many large divine beasts appearing, the people on board the ships are still overwhelmed as they stare at it with their jaws on the floor. Xiao Jiang jumps onto the phoenix and it charges towards the Tao Tai. The sky is filled with the colors red, white, and black as they come together in a mad frenzy. The soldiers quickly take down the sails to prevent the Yu Huang from getting overturned by their fierce gusts of wind. Perhaps there's too much blood loss. Screech! <laughs> Just as I am wondering if I should... Excuse me, doggo. If I should staunch the bleeding, there suddenly comes a loud cry. A blood-red beam of light comes out of the phoenix's back and pierces large eye under the Tao Tai's elbow. At the same time, on the north side, there comes a blue-green smoke wafted through the air where the battle with the Yue troops is going on. Yi, Yi Guang has killed the summoner! Only to see the Tao Tai howl mournfully, the, the ruptured eyeball starts to burst outwards like a bag full of water under a crushing blow, and a large blood-red flower blooms in the water and dissipates. Dang, that's graphic. While Nung has lost, it is also not a total victory for Qi. I finally realized that one fact. Princess, where are we? 
我们在云梯关，齐国周师已经退到外海的港口去了，所以吴君远入港休息了。I rub my temples. Before I passed out on the boat, I thought I saw a strange apparition of my father. 吴少君，你的伤口发作了吗？ It is then that I realized that my wounded left hand was wrapped thick in bandages. It looks like the cut was not just a scratch. My dogs are very barky tonight. I'm fine. What about Yi Guang? He went to the hospital. He told me to take care of you. Just. Xiao Zhang looks troubled. When I look at her with curiosity. She starts telling me her thoughts with a red face and some difficulty. It's okay. It's always nice to heal enemy troops because, like. It's how do I wear this? Respect that, and also that there can be peace. Like normally, wars are between like two like political figures or something, and all of the soldiers are everything are just pawns for them. So, if the pawns can help the other pawns. Then yeah, go for it, because they should. People shouldn't be treated that way, whatsoever. So I, I am totally fine with this. I would heal everybody. We thought it was something serious. This is only natural. Wu Shaojun, you don't blame me. We are guessing that it was the Dragon God who manipulated Tang Hen into killing your brother and starting this war. With this. They can test the strength of the male phoenix dagger. The dagger. The male phoenix dagger. And if they win, they can get prestige to lessen his sin of killing his king. Someone like him would not care two hoots about the lives of the common people. You know it. Xiao Zheng's eyes are already turning red at that point now. At that point, and now her tears just start to flow without an end. I can only comfort her by stroking her head. If you're going to praise someone, at least do so with a smile. After all, we cannot pretend to be a real man in front of you. How is it now? Dot dot dot. I understand. Thank you, Princess Xiaojian. It's okay, it's okay, it's okay. What? What is the matter? We're not dead yet, so do not cry. It is not us, but our forefathers and the Dragon God who have left this to us. The Dragon God tricked our forefathers into thinking that they were swearing an oath to heaven in exchange for the prosperity of the Kingdom of Nung. Our forefathers thought that all they had to do was to honor and pray to the gods, but only after taking the vow did the Dragon God tell them that it was their souls and bodies, and the souls and bodies of all the kings after them, that will be sacrificed. <laughs> If we do not kill him, the kingdom of Nung, where the descendants of our royal family will be forever shackled by these chains. Not to mention that we have already made an enemy out of the dragon god, so the least we can do is not drag the whole kingdom to the grave with us. So 
么说，齐国也。It will be as impossible as asking a tiger for its skin. Nung is a good example of that. Oh. Thanks for the sentiments, Princess Xiaodong. We feel much better now. How's Yu Qing doing? We wish to discuss about the war with him. 吴少君，你别勉强自己。齐军这场仗也损失了不少船只，暂时不会再来了。Dot dot dot. Even so, it is the fact that the army of Nung has lost the battle. If only we were more alert, the people of Chu would not. I hold my tongue and smile bitterly. This is not the time to whine. It will only put Shao Cheng in a spot. We can hear the sounds of the waves as silent descends onto the cabin. It can also be the morning song or morning song for the thousands of warriors of Nung that were lost at sea. Even though I know I should be consoling the soldiers and discussing about how we are going to counterattack, I don't feel motivated. If only Chun Feng was here. My body starts to shiver uncontrollably. Princess, I miss Chun Feng. 西子给陈峰用了镇魂术，不过龙神的咒术很强，一时半会儿恐怕根除不了，所以先生在船舱画了风阵，让陈峰暂时在镇内休养。Princess, please help us change our clothes. We wish to see him. 吴少君，使不得。且不说你也需要休养，万一陈峰又失了神智呢？ It's often said that a diseased heart requires medication for the heart. If the Dragon God's curse managed to enter Cheng Feng's body because he was worried about me, and if I were to avoid him now, it would only cause him to worry more and increase the effect of the curse. I always feel it's not right. Cheng Feng is just a civilian. Is it worth taking this risk to look at him for a moment? Xiao Zhang gives me a look of confusion as I nod my head. Chen Feng has been by our side for many years. There is no way of putting a measure of worth on the bonds and affections between family members. We were the reason why he was cursed, so we cannot just stand by and do nothing. I understand. If Wu Shaojun is not willing, I will take Zhu Quejian with me to see him. If you meet with any problems, you can at least help him. Then I will rely on Princess Xiaojiang for that. Yo, Chen Feng, what's up? <laughs> the turbulent ocean waves seem to be cradling the cold half moon as slivers, yeah, slivers of silver light blend in with the darkness. Even a big boat like the Yu Huang will be tossed about like a leaf on such brittle waves. Chen Feng is lying on the couch with his eyes closed. His face is pale, and there are a few strips of cloths, cl cloths with faint, odd patterns wrapped around his body. I've always thought that it would be the injuries that he had sustained in Sulu village that would be hard to heal. I was not aware that it would actually be the Dragon God's curse that is already slowly eating away at his body and mind. If only I had paid more attention to Cheng Feng. I did. I paid a boatload of attention to him. Shoujin. Oh. oh! <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello? I come to my senses when I hear Cheng Feng's voice and our eyes meet. I don't know how long he has been kneeling in front of me with that look of concern and confusion in his eyes. He does not seem to be as rash and as frantic as before. How do you feel? Cheng Feng is not the only one. He is the only one who is the only one. Nip. Nip. <laughs> Saying this just after walking up, or waking up, are you not concerned about the results of the battle today? Looking at the bandages on my hand, I cannot help but laugh. Because the king and the kingdom are one and the same, our injuries cannot be compared to the pain of losing the battle. Qi 
So you have heard about it. Are you wearing pants, good sir? Okay. He is. He's wearing pants. <laughs> After seeing Cheng Feng's innocent expression, Xiao Zhang gives me a puzzled and nervous look. Without waiting for me to react, she continues to question him. Oh, baby. Did Yi Guang mention anything other than the battle? Yi Guang said, He must go to the Shi Jia Mian Gong. He must go to the Shi Jia Mian Gong. He must go to the Shi Jia Mian Gong. He must go to the Shi Jia Mian Gong. He must go to the Shi Jia <laughs> Hi! Shocked by the news, my legs give way beneath me. Luckily, Chen Feng is quick to react and catches me before I hit the ground. How did Princess Xiao Jiang know about the secret secret place palace? E. Xian Sheng in the sea, when he was captured by the Long Shen Saints, he found that they were using the power of the Tiantian to control the Shi Jia Dynasty. He was worried that the Long Shen had found the secret place of the Mi Gong. No. What does Chen Dan want with the Jade Artifact of the Shi Clan? He's too crafty to do something so pointless. There must be more than meets the eye here. Xian Sheng also thought so. He asked me. Huh. Even he is not confident about this. We should have went with him. Before I can say anything else, I feel Chen Feng's uh, reproachful gaze on me. But the battle is not over, and I can only count on Yi Guang now. Wu Shaojun, your body still needs to rest. Who? Eh? Xiao Jiang? Gu Su Xin Shi, Qiu Jian Da Wang. The messenger looks around at his surroundings and quickly closes the door before entering the cabin. He looks at Xiao Zheng and hesitates. The princess can be trusted, so please speak without reservation. Princess Xiao Zheng is one of us. There is no need for you to worry. The messenger hesitates before taking out a very small lacquered tube. Chen Feng takes it from him on my behalf and removes a thin strip of cloth that is hidden inside. There is only one line written in a familiar handwriting and with Wu Sushu's personal stamp on it. Bring the troops back for fear of a coup in Lung. My vision suddenly goes blank as Chen Feng rushes forward to steady me. Even then, I find my voice trembling uncontrollably. Since you came from Gu Su. You surely must know what is happening over there. Hui Da Wang, Lian Jun Bei Shang Bujing Zhi Hou, Yu Yao Long Xi Ji Gu Su, Dan Bei Da Zhu, Shi Xie De Xian Jing Suo Shang, Cang Huang Tao Li, Wu Ren Shang Wang, Gu Su Cheng, Yu Jing Wu Xian. I am adjusting my seat. There we go. Why did the Prime Minister order you to send the secret message? What has happened to the Prime Minister? Surprised by my sudden outburst, the messenger takes half a step back and quickly bows his head. Uh, uh, the granary is damaged? This is a fine kettle of fish. What else are all of you hiding from us? 
Will we also be the last to know if King if Kingdom of Nung decides to change its king one day? Hearing Cheng Feng's calm voice helps suppress my anger as I take a few deep breaths. If only I did not have to deal with the cruel reality that my enemies are attacking me from both my front and back. It doesn't matter if the army of Chi retreats or not. We still have to go back. Chen Feng, rest here while we go and see Chu Cheng. What? What just happened? In an instant, the scene before my eyes changes. Chen Feng has stabbed the messenger in the chest. Xiao Zhang lies unconscious nearby. I cannot tell if this is real or an illusion. Chen Feng? Instinctively, I look up at Chen Feng, only to have him look indifferently back at me. And that is where we're going to have to leave it off. <laughs> I feel bad. But hey, I guess this is just more uh, incentive for you guys to go and get it yourselves and play it yourselves. Because, um, yeah, um, oh, what the heck? <laughs> that is such a cliffhanger. Oh, my goodness. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go move over to the other stream. So if you would like to follow me, you can go over to that one if you'd like. I will end this one off. So I will see you all pretty soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>